today we will be making gnocchi. Uh, gnocchi is a Italian dish through uh, time and evolution. A lot of things have changed with gnocchi. We will be making a Northern Italian dish with a California spin onto it. Our ingredients today that we will be using, russet potatoes, European butter, Parmesan Reggiano cheese, aged between 18 months to 36 months, kosher salt, white pepper, all-purpose flour, fresh corn, and also fresh peas. You also need one egg, and we have French sea salt to finish. First and foremost for gnocchi is to get the right size of potatoes. Usually they should be around the same size. It is best also to use a russet potato. The starch content in them is a happy medium that gives you the ability to use it in multi facets. So the first part of the process of cooking uh, the gnocchi is to boil your potatoes. You start them in cold water and salted water. And then once you start that, you have to bring them up slowly to a temperature. And the reason for that is that if you use hot water to start your potatoes, then that means they will cook on the outside and in the inside, they will be completely raw. But when you use cold water, the temperature of the potato goes up at the same time. So they cook evenly. All right, so now that the potatoes have been boiled and they are hot, uh, what you would do is you would remove the skins from the potatoes. And the reason why is that you will not use the skins in the gnocchi itself. They are only uh, used just to protect them when they're boiling. Use a fork and pretty much just remove all of the skin. Make sure that there is no visible skin on the potato itself. And then what I'm going to use is what we call a potato ricer. And I'm going to place those pieces inside and I'm going to push them through like so. Use your fork to loosen up all the pieces inside, squeeze again, and then proceed to put in the next pieces. If you have to cut the potato in half, you can. Uh, just make sure that you do them when they are hot because if they are not hot, you will not be able to squeeze them through the ricer. The purpose of using a ricer is that it's going to give the texture of the gnocchi itself a very smooth texture. If you did not use one of these, you would have large pieces of potato and you would not get the texture that gnocchi normally has. And then what you want to do is just make sure that you take all of the potato mixture off. Make sure that they are at room temperature to cold now. And the reason why is the next ingredient that you're going to add to that is egg. And if you add egg to warm, then you are going to cook the product. So you don't want to do that. So these potatoes are already about a warm temperature. So I'm going to crack my egg inside. Then I'm going to add salt and white pepper. Remember that your uh, water was already seasoned with salted water. So you don't want to add too much. In addition to that is that you're going to use Parmesan cheese at the end. And that's also salty. So you want to balance out your uh, salt additive by just enough to give it a slight flavor profile. It is based differently on every person, uh, but for this application here, it's best just to add only a little bit. So once I have these ingredients in, I'm going to mix them all together. I'm going to break the egg yolk, mix all the ingredients together. And once that it's fully incorporated, then I'm going to add in my flour. Now I'm going to add all that together to make a dough. And with the natural amount of liquid that is inside of the potato, all of that flour will be absorbed slowly until it becomes one mass. I don't want to overwork the dough at all. If you do, then that means you will create a very starchy product that you don't want it to be a glenatinous. You just want it to be where it holds together. And once all that is mixed together, I would wrap it up for about, let's say 10 to 15 minutes, and then my dough would be ready to roll. Okay, so now that the dough has rested, uh, what we are going to do is now form it into the actual traditional gnocchi size. Uh, that is why it's named that. However, there has been variations of size difference. The traditional way to use what we're going to use is a fork. Back historically, uh, a lot of the Italian uh, women used to use a fork to make this. Now you can find different variations of a piece of wood that you can roll them off of. And at times there is not even a process of making um, an indentation on them. And the reason why you make an indentation on them is because if you use a sauce that has meat in it, for example, then that meat is going to stay in between all the grains that you've created on this fork. So it's almost like it carries itself um, into your mouth. What you need is just a little bit of flour. You don't want to add too much flour. And the reason for that is that if you add more flour to your dough, 
then that means your dough is gonna become more dry. You've added the correct amount of flour that makes this dough rollable and pliable to do it. So you only want it so it won't stick. So what I'm going to do is sprinkle just a little bit on my work surface. And what I'm going to do is just nicely roll it, kind of get it all coated. And now I'm going to begin the rolling process of it. I am not pushing too tight at all. And once again, the flour is just there, just so it won't stick. So overall, you wanna make sure that it is uniform in size. And I barely use just enough of the flour once again to make sure that it just does not stick. So once I get to that point, I am going to cut them into small little pieces. A chef's knife or a offset spatula, whichever you have, you can use. And what I'm going to do is cut them into relatively small pieces. Now that I have them all cut up, I wanna to toss them in a little bit more of the flour because you do not want them to stick. So lightly, you just want to not smash them. You wanna keep the integrity of what you rolled out. And now I'm going to move them to the side, make sure that they are not stacked all over on top of each other. And I'm going to have a half sheet tray and I'm going to put the remainder of my flour on here. Now, with my fork, I'm going to have my fork placed right down on the table. And on the pieces that I actually cut, I'm going to hold one of those pieces and I'm gonna push slightly down with my thumb and I'm gonna roll it off. So in reality, this is what you get. You get slightly the marking of the fork with a little indentation. That is where your sauce would hold inside. So I'm gonna repeat the process again and just let them roll off. As mentioned before, there are some places that will not even put this indentation inside. They will just cut them and proceed to boiling them in water. So now that we have them all mixed, I just want to once again, toss them in the flour and then gently place them all on your floured sheet tray. And then they are going to be ready to put in the boiling water. We let them rise to the surface of the water uh, that is when you know that they are done. Uh, once they are done, you get uh, some sort of serrated uh, spoon and you take them out of the water, put them right into your hot pan that has a sauce. In this application, we were using corn and peas uh, and then a little bit of butter. The secret to that, uh, to making a nice creamy sauce, is adding some of the liquid that you boiled the gnocchi in. And the reason why is it's salted and so that's a natural salt component, a flavoring profile that you're adding. So only a little bit of that, and then you would add a little bit of white pepper uh, and then your Parmesan cheese. To garnish, I use some microgreens, and then once again, I just finish it off with a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and then it's ready to go. It's a nice summer dish, not too heavy, uh, really complements Southern California. It's nice and fresh. Uh, when the seasons change, I can see mushrooms with that. Um, and then when the winter comes, uh, you can use um, even sausages and meat ragus to finish it off.